Hi folks, uh, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, and today we're going to do a video called Rethinking Fiber. Fiber, fiber, fiber. So many people make so much noise about fiber and how important it is and how crucial it is. Let's rethink fiber and put it into biologic and scientific context. If you like this channel, please hit the subscribe button. It helps me um, to produce, to provide more content to other people, to elevate our name and what pops up to other people. Um, and as you subscribe to our channel, it actually makes us a little bit more money from YouTube. I don't get the money. This is a nonprofit, but it goes to pay for the content to these videos. If you like us, also drop a few pennies. Um, you can do that. Look at the show notes today on our PayPal account or as a Patreon. We really appreciate that income. But leave comments as well. Please leave comments, but let's put fiber into context. What is fiber? So fiber is simply the human indigestible forms of chains of sugars. Chains of sugars that we call polysaccharides, multiple sugars linked together in a particular way that human being intestines have lost the ability to break down and absorb. So sugar comes into the gut in two forms really as absorbable sugar, whether it's starch, glycogen, or sugar, and as non-absorbable sugar, which we call fiber. And the indigestible forms of polysaccharides are collectively called fiber. And fiber contains these sugar-linked bonds, which cannot be broken down by human enzymes. And also, the human intestine does not contain bacteria or funguses or viruses like vegetarian animals that can break fiber down into and turn it into fatty acids that can, then can be absorbed. So fiber is unabsorbable and therefore deemed to be indigestible. In other words, remember this, that from your mouth to your asshole to, to your anus, that tube that runs through the body is actually outside of the human body. It's a tube that runs through the middle of us called our intestine that's actually outside. The inside of the intestine is outside the human body. Ah, that is outside my body. And that continues all the way down until the little brown wrinkled hole. And then it's definitely out, outside of my body. So fiber by definition cannot be absorbed from that tube that's outside of the body. Starting point. Has no nutritional value to the human body. Now, there are two forms of fiber. The first one is called, and it's what fiber does in water. The first one is insoluble fiber that does not dissolve in water. It may suck water up, but it doesn't dissolve in water. And this includes cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. Those are the names for it. Cellulose is found in things like whole wheat flour, bran, vegetables. Hemicellulose can be found in bran, in whole grains. Lignin is kind of a woody fiber. Hmm. Think of it as splinters in your gut. But it's found in wheat bran and the seeds of fruits and vegetables. So seeds are, are commonly there. Lignin, um, seeds, gluten is part of all of that. So think of those as insoluble fiber that does not dissolve in water. Then we have soluble fiber, which dissolves or swells in water. This includes things like pectins, mucilages, and gums, which are often additives to food that's, produced, that's, that's, that's uh, manufactured. These substances are, cannot be broken down by human enzymes. But instead, all of these substances can be fermented by bacteria in the stomach, a little bit in the, a little bit in the stomach, but not much, because the acid kills the bacteria that come with a food. The small intestine, which doesn't have a huge biologic load, it's mostly enzymatic, but then most of this fermentation in humans occurs in the colon or the large intestine. And pectins are found in apples, strawberries, carrots, uh, because it forms a gel often used in jams and jellies. Mucilages and gums are similar in structure. The sources of gums include oats, legumes, beans, peas, guar, and and barley. The key fact to remember is that during digestion, all carbohydrates need to be broken down to glucose, fructose, or galactose to be absorbed. 
This means that indigestible carbohydrates cannot be broken down to that, and that we call fiber. So the question is, what in human beings is the value of that fiber? Now, they will tell you, the people that are pro-fiber will tell you that it's great to support the biome, but the biome is a vegetable-based biome that turns fiber into shit. Those same bacteria, funguses, and viruses have the potential to be very toxic to the human body. They often trigger inflammation of the intestine and an autoimmune reaction within the intestine that they again then cross over into your bloodstream and affect other parts of the human body. Gluten, for example, and some of the seed-based, the grain-based antigens can trigger Hashimoto's disease, autoimmune disease of the thyroid, which we see very commonly. And when you get rid of the grain products and get rid of the inflammation from carbohydrates, Hashimoto's often goes into remission. Not always, but often. Gets better. And yet they tell us to eat this fiber. So what else does fiber do? Fiber can absorb certain things. Oh, it's going to absorb the cholesterol so the cholesterol doesn't get, ab get absorbed into the body. Not sure why that's bad. Not sure why that's bad because cholesterol is necessary in the human body. Vital for your brain. So if you want autism and Alzheimer's, eat a lot of fiber. Yep, I said that. Eat a lot of fiber if you want those diseases. It's not the only contributor. But it absorbs though. Does it absorb toxins? Maybe a little bit, but those toxins are already in the gut. The reason your body is dumping the toxins into the gut is to get rid of them. Whether the fiber hangs on to them or not, those toxins aren't going to be absorbed in the colon. Yes, fiber absorbs water. The water-soluble fiber and the water-insoluble fiber still sucks up like a sponge a lot of fiber, which, gives it, which allows us to poop. But pure carnivore animals, lions and alligators, they poop just fine. You don't see them exploding on the savanna because they got so clogged up and so constipated, they exploded in this splat of exploding lions and cheetahs and leopards. No, they poop just normally. So you don't need fiber to poop. In fact, fat, salt, and water is an ideal mixture for a healthy poop. And human beings are designed that way. We don't need fiber to poop. So number one, fiber is not necessary in the human diet. Fiber is not necessary in the human diet. It's a bulk laxative. But it is not necessary in the diet to absorb those things, to protect the human gut, so-called, or to create a healthy bowel movement. Now let's look at the potential toxicity, the potential damage of fiber, soluble or insoluble. Number one, the, the types of bacteria, viruses, and funguses needed to process, to ferment fiber which has no value to humans, triggers a human inflammatory response in the intestine. And at worst, we see it as inflammatory bowel disease, as Crohn's disease, as ulcerative colitis, as inflammation of the intestine, as autoimmune disease, or as irritable bowel syndrome. Fermentation of that fiber, yeah, now this is going to be interesting, produces three to five grams of alcohol and methane and methanol in the human intestine that the liver then has to deal with as if you had an alcoholic drink. Didn't think of that, did you? It creates methane. We're farting, we're full of gas, in part because of that fermentation process. It's gas producing. Those bacteria are not friendlies. They're unfriendlies. The antigens in those plants are trying to protect the plants from being eaten. Unfriendlies. Or at least in seeds, protecting the seed so that you will poop it out miles from where you ate it and spread the, the, um, the seeds. But they don't care about you. They don't want your body to absorb it or to break it down. So anti those antigens are aggressive, angry, causing you to expel that food. That's how plants get propagated. A lot of them through poop of animals. Birds mostly. We're not birds. 
Then in the colon, in the colon, so it causes cramping and irritability and irritable bowel in the upper intestine, but in the colon, that fermentation process, that acidification of the poop, damages the colonic mucosa, can cause inflammation, as we said, but also leads to diverticuli, little outpockets of the intestine that are abnormal muscular uh, uh, problems that can cause polyps in the colon, and it can cause cancer. It can increase the risk of cancer. And yet they blame meat for cancer. It's not the meat, it's the potatoes that you ate with the meat that's the problem. Or the vegetables that you ate with the meat, but their cognitive dissonance doesn't allow them to think that. The plant-based people. So fiber, for, in my book, is a liability rather than asset in the human intestine. It's taking us backwards evolutionarily to where we've left and come a long way from. And if you're taking probiotics or prebiotics, they're almost always plant-based. Well, if you're eating mostly an animal-based product or, or diet, why the hell are you using bacteria and things, other, eating other people's shit that ferments, in, ferments stuff in your body that you don't need? Let's be real about fiber, folks. It's oversold. And harmful. Your choice. Your choice, your choice. I'm not going to say you don't eat fiber. But don't tell me it's beneficial for you. Don't tell me you have to. Because then you're either saying something false or you're saying I'm not a human. Think, 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 think. Understand. And experiment. I am the carb addiction doc. If you've got intestinal inflammatory problems, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel, we can certainly give you guidance. We can help. Give us a shout, 561-517-0642. Leave a comment. Till next time.